Welcome to the 36th Annual Pacific Rim International Conference on Disability and Diversity. My name is Nicole. Um, I will be your session discussion for this um, session for this duration. And in case you don't see me, um, I have blonde, long hair and I'm wearing like a purple shirt. Um, this session is titled as Resources for Family Engagement in Education and will be presented by Melody Halsell and Angela Matian. And they are working with the Hawaiian State Family Engagement Center. Um, we have two ASL interpreters. So thank you very much for joining us, um, Eric, Kerry and Erica. And then we have our room host and co-host with Alejandro and Chin. Thank you for making this um, as smooth as possible for us all. So this session will be running an hour and 15 minutes. Um, we will have some time in the end for discussions, but also feel free during to either raise your hand or put your questions in the chat. I'm happy to address them to the presenters. Um, everyone's microphone will be muted um, just for our own sake of um, not hearing any background. Um, like most sessions for this conference will be recorded. If you do not want to be um, this and identifiable on the recording, please um, turn off your camera. You can put in a picture and you can also change your name and you, when you go into participants and then you can rename um, your um, your participation in that way. Just a little quick update about Zoom. At the bottom, you have participants and chat. So if you open up the chat, then you have that um, chat window opening on the right-hand side of your Zoom screen. And that's, um, and I know people have been using this and I can, um, hello, hi, hello. I said, so you see that in um, the chat. And Chin, if you could, please um, put the link for the slide presentation in there now, so you would have a copy there as well. And without any further wait time here, I would um, pass on the word to our presenters. Welcome very much. Hello, thank you for having us. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I am Angela Mattian. I have brown skin and dark brown hair. Today, I tied it up and put it in a bun. I'm wearing a black dress. I am the project lead and training coordinator for the Hawaii Statewide Family Engagement Center. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Our presentation is Resources for Family Engagement in Education. And I am Melody Halzel. I have white skin, long brown hair, and I'm wearing a white top. My role is the graduate assistant for the HVEC project, and I'm studying for a PhD in public health at the University of Hawaii. Next slide. Today, we will be introducing five high impact family engagement strategies to support student learning, discuss family engagement strategies that have been adapted for the pandemic, introduce the tools our center uses to ensure that documents are accessible according to Section 508 compliance, and identify a variety of family engagement resources. This is a talk story session, so we plan to ask a couple of questions throughout our presentation with opportunity to discuss via the chat box. Please feel free to ask questions that you may have during our presentation in the chat, and we will address them during, during or at the end of the session. And the links to the resources that we discuss in these slides are all available hyperlinked in the slide deck that we have just shared, the PDF slide deck, and will be provided in the chat box throughout this presentation. Next slide. Thank you, Melody. So our center focuses on building the capacity of key stakeholders to build effective homeschool partnerships. On this slide, we have the logos of the Center on Disability Studies at UH at University of Hawaii at Manoa, and also the University of Hawaii Manoa um, logo and the College of Education. There are three children who are demonstrating excitement on this slide with their fists in the air. And that's how we like to think about the homeschool partnerships as we're working with their key stakeholders. The words on the slide on this slide are of our missions, our center's mission and goal. It reads, our mission to promote high impact activities and policies that build powerful partnerships among family, school and community in order to enhance child development and student achievement. 
our center's goal to support and strengthen the three spheres of influence that contribute to student success, which are family, school, and community. We provide training to schools, seek guidance from our advisory committee, and develop partnerships to leverage resources to support families and their students. On this slide, it's titled Spheres of Influence, and there are three circles. In one of the circles at the far left, the words community of practice, school cohort training around family engagement is in the middle. The circle next to it has the following words, parent majority advisory committee in the center. And the third circle has the following words, community focused partnership meetings at the center of this circle. These are all areas and components of our project that we work with these stakeholders to ensure that we get the information that we need to be able to leverage these resources. Research shows that involving families in their children's education is paramount to student success. When families are meaningfully, meaningfully and continuously engaged in their children's learning and development, it has a positive impact on their child's health, academics, and well being. To do this, we have to see our families as assets. Families have a wealth of knowledge about their children, incorporate effective ways to communicate with families by building school teams that focus on family engagement as a learning strategy, and increase the capacity of educators, families, and community members to work together. These approaches help ensure that families are able to support their children's education, encourage growth, advocate for change, and collaborate with schools. This slide is titled Family Engagement as a Learning Strategy, and there are four circles. The first circle is outlined in pink, and at the center it has the words fa value families as assets. The circle next to this one is outlined in blue, and at the center it has the words communication, translation, and accessibility. The next circle is outlined in green, and the words in the center of the circle has, is family engagement action team. And the final circle next to that is outlined in orange and the words at the center of the circle are provide tips and resources for families, educators, and the community. Family engagement is about building partnerships, as I mentioned before, to make sure that every single student succeeds. On this slide is titled, what is family engagement? And there are two bullet points with text. The words for the first bullet point are family engagement is a shared responsibility in which schools and other community agencies and organizations are committed to reaching out to engage families in meaningful ways and in which families are committed to actively supporting their children's learning and development. The next bullet point says effective family engagement cuts across and reinforces learning in the multiple settings while children learn at home in pre-kindergarten programs, in school, in after-school programs, in faith-based institutions, and in the community. Now, we're, we're going to share with you the resources available on our website. The title of this slide is HVEC, which is Hawaii Statewide Family Engagement Center website walkthrough. The following words are listed on this this slide, HVEC website, about family engagement, connect with us, downloadables, and family resource page. We're now going to walk you through our website and these resources. When you visit our website, you will find foundational information on family engagement. Just as I mentioned before, what is family engagement? This slide has three images, all screenshots of landing page of our website. There are four bullet points. The first bullet point is what is family engagement? The second, why family engagement matters. Next, high impact strategies. And finally, dual capacity building framework. These are all topics of information you can find on our website. You will also find the dual capacity building framework. This is a guide that we use when working with families and to build the capacity of stakeholders. This framework was developed by Dr. Karen Mapp and her team at the Harvard Education um, Institute. Goals used to develop goals toward effective family engagement that is linked to student achievement.
This slide is titled about an infographic of the framework on this slide. We start at the far left of the image, and that's where the framework begins, describing the challenges to family engagement. It highlights some of the challenges to family school, par to family school partnerships among educators and families. In this section or component where for educators, the challenges listed there have not, educators may have not been exposed to strong um, examples of family engagement, may have received minimal to no training, and may not see partnerships as essential to practice, or may have developed a deficit mindset. Under this section for challenges for families, um, they have not may have not been exposed to strong examples of family engagement as well. They may have had negative past experience with schools and educators, may not feel invited to contribute to their child's education, and may feel disrespected, unheard, and unvalued. As we move to the right of the framework, this section outlines the essential conditions to build effective family school partnerships. They are divide, this section is divided into two areas. What the first area is the process conditions and the second organizational conditions. Once these conditions are in place, it builds and enhances families and educators abilities to work with one another. These abilities are captured in four areas called the four C's. Capabilities, which are the skills and knowledge. Connections, which are networks. Cognition is the shift in beliefs and values. And finally, confidence, self-efficacy. This component of the framework is referred to the policy and program goals. The final section of the framework highlights the capacity outcomes of the educators, families, and students. For educators, they're empowered through this, through the essential conditions by connecting with family engagement, by connecting family engagement, excuse me, to student learning and student and development. Engage families as co-creators, honors families' assets, and create a welcoming culture. Families engage in different roles. And as such listed in this particular section of the framework as co-creators, um, they are more inclined to support the school and all the students become advocates and role models. Effective family school partnerships are critical to student achievement and development. This is highlighted as the ultimate goal and outcome, which is the final component of the framework. And the words in this part of the infographic are effective partnerships that support student and school improvement. So our center uses this framework in developing training and then also when we're developing our resources. And so now we'll hand it over to my colleague, Melody, to share more about what these resources are. Thank you, Angela. So a little bit, just to clarify again, we are the Hawaii Statewide Family Engagement Center and we call ourselves HVEC. So when I'm considering the HVEC website or talking about our HVEC resources, those are the Hawaii Family Engagement Center resources. This slide is called Access Resources for Educators and Families. On this slide is a screenshot of the HVEC downloadables page, and the links are available on the slide deck and will be in the chat box. Our HVEC downloadables page provides resources that were created for educators and families to promote family engagement strategies. This includes the Welcome Back Family Engagement Packages for Educators and Families, tools and guides, including an at-home learning resource guide and a financial empowerment guide for high schoolers, and the HVEC quarterly newsletters. Next slide. Um, this, this slide is titled Downloadables, the HVEC quarterly newsletter. Our center has created quarterly newsletters to provide useful and relevant information on family engagement strategies and to provide updates to our community partners, the schools we work with, and family members in the community about local family engagement projects, trainings, events, and highlights. There are tips, strategies, and free resources in each newsletter that are specifically catered for educators, families, and community organizations. All of the newsletters are available to download from the HVEC website and include a link to an accessible version, accessible version, which is in Google document form. This slide shows the front page of the HVEC newsletter that came out in February. Next slide. 
These next two slides are titled Five High Impact Strategies, and we'll talk about the Welcome Back Packages Family Engagement for Ohana, the, o the Hawaiian term for family, and for educators, which were developed in 2020. These Welcome Back Packages for Family Engagement were developed for families and educators to promote five high impact family engagement strategies, but with the information and content tailored specifically for either the family perspective or for the educator's perspective. These family engagement packages were designed with families in mind to be attractive with large text, simple language, not too lengthy, and an accessible version is available in Google document form. In the welcome back packages package for families, the five high impact strategies include a first phone call home, how to build or building a partnership with teachers, which provides tips and ways to support families in communicating effectively with an educator in the beginning of the school year. Virtual assistance tips, three important questions parents and families should ask, social and emotional resiliency information, and the Parents Profile for Students, a resource that is also available on the HVEC downloadables page. Following the creation of the Welcome Back Package for Families, the documents were reviewed by our Parent Majority Advisory Committee board members and local community partners for input to make sure that our content is relevant and accessible. The image on the left shows the cover of the Welcome Back Package for Families. Next slide. The Welcome Back Package <clears throat> Family Engagement for Educators, this is a similar package that mirrors the five high impact strategies for families, but is specific for educators and to provide educators with tips and strategies to help them engage with families. These, high, these five high impact strategies include a welcoming phone call script and video, which show a great example of how to start off the communication with families in a positive manner and in the beginning of the year. This is very important for relationship building. How to host a back to school or open house event that engages families. Other um, strategies include why and how to plan and prepare for a virtual family conference and engaging with equity to empower all families. Additional resources in this package include the archived webinar series, Building Powerful Partnerships with Families, hosted by Dr. Karen Mapp, and the AFECT free online modules for instructors in elementary and secondary education. And the image on the left shows the cover of the Welcome Back Package for Educators. Next slide. One of our center's partnerships resulted in parenting during a pandemic, a parent and family centered collaboration with the Hawaii Department of Education, Kailua Kalaheo Complex. This nine part webinar series was planned based on parent interests, is accessible online and connects families with experts on various topics that families and parents said that they were interested in at this time. And these topics include motivating children to learn during the pandemic, understanding and coping with anxiety in the context of COVID-19, smart strategies, centering your child in the IEP process, special video concerts are now available as well, and many more. All sessions are recorded, archived, and include a slide deck with resources. And the image on the right is the flyer for the Parenting During a Pandemic webinar series with a silhouette image of a family holding hands. Next slide. Thank you, Melody. At this moment, um, we have um, kind of a, a quick talk story. Um, this slide is titled Talk Story in Chat. However, if you are unable to use the chat box, you can unmute yourself and share your thoughts. The background image is a chalkboard with a stack of textbooks. There's a white box with orange text. The words, in this box is what types of resources would enable you to incorporate more family engagement in school or home. So we invite you at this moment to share your thoughts regarding that question. And I'll, um, I'll repeat it one more time. What types of resources would, you, would enable you to incorporate more family engagement in school or home?
And I guess another thought would be, are any other types of resources that you found in particular that you've been using, um, in particular a website, digital resource or social media outlets to engage other, to engage families or perhaps you being a parent of children yourself? What have you found most helpful? Some of the things that um, we've heard educators and families found very helpful at this moment have been the different ways that they've been using social media. For example, Twitter, um, Facebook, a lot of families have been enjoying a lot of uh, topics centered um, around social emotional um, learning, um, topics around um, how to just self care during this time um, using uh, Facebook Live. We've seen a lot of a lot of our partners and a lot of people using these different um, media outlets. Um, Melanie puts in the chat box, linking parents with each other. Yes, you are um, definitely correct, Melanie. There has been a lot of uh, networking between students and between parents, which we have found very, very um, empowering um, during the parenting, during the pandemic. Uh, families um, were just very happy just to have a space to hear about a specific topic, but also to talk about what their concerns are, or maybe perhaps the solutions and resources. So there was a lot of that uh, conversation and sharing going on. Um, ben puts major barrier for fa many families appears to be tech logistic issues, such as poor internet, lack of quiet private space and basic computer literacy by parents. You, you are certainly correct, Ben. We, um, our Hawaii After School Alliance um, showcased a panel of students. Um, majority of those students were um, high school seniors um, across different schools in Hawaii. And they shared just what you had mentioned that many of them um, are you know, either do, you know, doing work or they have uh, multiple people in the house using the internet. And also um, sometimes it's limited space. So they're having to kind of adjust and kind of share that space. And, and some of the students said it, it becomes a little chaotic at a point, but they're learning how to adjust. And then we do have schools um, in the rural parts uh, across the Hawaii Islands that are, um, that are experiencing the lack or poor connectivity to the internet. And so um, we've heard from our partners and worked with our partners in learning how families can adjust to this. And many schools have found ways to get, um, either create a internet kind of hub where families can go and park um, or go outside, um, you know, social distance to, um, you know, just provide a space for them to connect to the internet. Um, some of them have actually invested in hotspots and given families, um, you know, uh, the ability to use these hotspots. And um, Nicole, yes, um, puts in the guidance and how to support kids with schoolwork. And we've heard that there's been a lot of, um, I guess, you know, those spaces for families, um, parents to connect with each other and share their tips and strategies and how they're adjusting to this different routine um, on supporting their students and learning. And so thank you everyone for your, your thoughts and your um, comments and feedback. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward with the uh, presentation. I'm now gonna turn it back over to my colleague, Melody. Thank you, Angela. Um, Nicole, did you have a question? No, I was just, um wanting to bring the converse, bring in the conversation. Oh, thank you. Moving on, totally fine, sorry. Awesome, yes. Um, also just to add, last year when the pandemic did start, we did create the at-home learning toolkit, which is available on our HVEC downloadables page. And it's probably still relevant today because we did provide some tips on how to create um, a safe, quiet learning space for children at home and different various techniques for families who are not familiar with um, technology to kind of get more engaged. So this slide is titled Making Resources Accessible. As a family engagement center and being housed in the Center on Disability Studies at the University of Hawaii, making sure our resources are accessible to educators and families in the community is a top priority. 
To ensure accessibility, it is important to identify potential challenges and come up with a plan or a process to address these. We also utilize asset-based solutions and ensure Section 508 compliance. Next slide. What are the challenges? Some of the challenges that we have come across and work to address when developing resources and materials for our website and resource distribution include accessibility, making digital products available and usable for everyone, including access and opportunities for all ranges of abilities. Translations, providing options for translation into other languages, ensuring language is reader friendly for varying grade levels. The distribution and reach, this includes how to target our spheres of influence, community organizations, families, and educators. The promotion of our products, creating meaningful partnerships for guidance and to share resources. And then we also have a MailChimp email list so that we can share our quarterly newsletters and other Hawaii Family Engagement Center activities with our growing um, contact list. The relevance for families is also a top priority. It's to ensure that our website and resources are tailored to the families in our community, and we consider all families as assets. And this slide has four images, a logo for accessibility, a post-it note with a greeting in many languages, a hand reaching for the sky, and three cutout paper dolls holding hands. Next slide. Asset-based solutions. To address some of these challenges, we like to rely on a variety of problem solving strategies and solutions. Our human based resources include the seeking input from our parent majority advisory committee members, strategizing and support from our local community based organizations and national statewide family engagement centers partners. Capacity building through our family engagement training series which includes participating local schools. And we also reach out and make connections with local experts for the required information, resources, and support. And the image on the right shows many people putting their hands together in a circle. And below that is a bubble with the word capacity building inside. Next slide. Section 508 compliance. 508 compliance is shorthand for a law that requires federal government websites and those that partner or contract with federal agencies to be safe and accessible for people with disabilities. What does 508 compliance and accessibility entail? Some of the major features of 508 compliance include closed captioning and subtitles for audio and video files, screen reader capability, large font size, high color contrast, and alternative image text. And the image on the right shows a logo for 508 compliance with a hand, eye, and ear symbol for accessibility. Next slide. This slide is titled, Resources to Ensure Website Accessibility. Having a 508 compliant and fully accessible website and our resources is a best practice to follow regardless of whether your organization is legally required to implement 508 compliance. The good thing is there are now many built-in features and online tools to ensure accessibility according to these guidelines. On this slide, we provided a list of technology-based resources that can support website, document, and resource accessibility and 508 compliance. These include browser extensions and the accessibility checker that is available for Microsoft Office and Adobe products. There are also free resources such as Wave and Colorable, which are easy to use, and a 508 compliant checklist with testing tools and strategies. And all of these links are available in the slide deck on slide number 20. Thank you, Melody. So we are here at their um, second or final talk story um, question. This slide is titled talk story in the chat, in chat. I'll, I'll, although you, if you can't use um, the chat box, you can unmute yourself and share, share your comments, feedbacks and thoughts. The background image is a child's hand coloring. There's a white box with orange text. The words in the orange text are 
the question, what is the most valuable thing you learned from this lesson today? And I'll repeat the question one more time. What is the most valuable thing you learned from this lesson today? Perhaps you may have learned something new. Perhaps you um, weren't familiar with the dual capacity building framework. Yes, the resources, yes. We are a fairly new um, center here in Hawaii, um, and we are a federal, federally funded uh, grant, um, which is a five-year grant from 2018 to, to uh, 2023. And there are actually 12 states that received um, this, this funding, this five-year grant funding. And so um, we are, because we're fairly new and like Melody mentioned, we do work with um, different constituents to provide these resources that are very much tailored um, to Hawaii, but also could be um, utilized based on the needs of anyone. And then uh, one uh, mention what in the chat box was your website has many resources that schools, teachers and families can use. Yes, we try our best to um, kind of tap into resources for all of these key stakeholders, which we call the, the uh, social spheres of influence. And there are two questions in the chat. How mm -hmm. do you distribute to schools and teachers and parents? And do we offer resources in different Pacific Island languages? Um, so I'll go ahead and answer that, Melody. Um, so in terms of the distribution um, to schools, teachers, and parents, like Melody mentioned before, we use MailChimp. And um, when we do kind of virtual presentations like this, or even on our newsletter, we send them out through MailChimp, but we're, um, we also have social media, and um, which is the Twitter and Facebook platform. We're looking into Instagram, but we haven't, um, we haven't explored that just yet. Um, but we do send them out to anybody that subscribes to our, our uh, MailChimp. And then we also work um, with, a, uh, with many schools. We have a school cohort training. Um, and so we distribute any information and resources through there. Or uh, we also um, connect with the, um, our Department of Education and um, they help out in distributing any information that we have. To, um, to schools, teachers, parents, and families. And then as uh, Melanie's question, do you offer resources in different Pacific languages? And um, currently we are working um, on, on that right now. We are looking at getting um, the, you know, kind of educator, excuse me, the family welcome back packet and some other of our downloadables currently are in the um, translation phase right now. So um, at this moment, no, but in the near, near future, we will have them available. Yes, and we also have um, here in Hawaii, we have um, the parent coordinator networking centers and that actually has a dedicated person which we call um, kind of a parent liaison or coordinator at schools. And so we um, distribute resources um, for educators and for families through that network as well. Thank you. And so our next slide is um, just uh, at this moment to be able to uh, answer any other further questions. Um, I'm also going to be putting a, a survey link in the chat box um, just to get your feedback. So we really greatly appreciate if you took um, a few minutes out of your time today um, just to uh, complete um, our survey. Again, we are federal funded um, entities, so um, it's important for us to get uh, folks' feedback and, con and data. Okay, and if you do have questions, we are nearing the end of our presentation. Um, uh, just let us know. So um, on this side, uh, if you are registered for the PACRIM conference, um, please join me and my colleague, uh, Dr. Chuan Chin, on Tuesday, March 2nd at 4 p.m to find out how schools can assess how welcoming their school is to families. Um, we have a, 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 we're familiar with a, a few or several tools that schools can use to make this assessment or evaluation. And so we're going to be sharing more information on that. And this slide here, just to describe it to you, is titled Next HVEC, Hawaii Statewide Family Engagement Center session, Ways to Assess Homeschool Partnerships. The words in the slide, are the presenters, Chuan Chin and Angela Matian. When Tuesday, March 2nd, 
The time is four o'clock to 4.45, so it's another talk story session. And this presentation will provide an overview of the tools, as I mentioned, available for assessing school-wide family engagement practices, including this partnership school rubric, family-friendly walkthrough, and homeschool partnership assessment. So hopefully folks, um, you're registered and you're able to join us um, that evening. And lastly, um, this is our last slide. We just wanna thank you for taking your time out on a Saturday to join us. Um, please do follow um, our uh, uh, Hawaii Statewide Family Engagement social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, HVEC website, and our email. Um, and then on this slide, um, we do have a picture of our logo, which does say um, Hawaii Statewide Family Engagement Center, and it has a book that's open. So I know that we had, um, oh, a walk is not option. Okay. Um, I'm so sorry about that, Becky. I just, I may have actually del um, accidentally deleted it. So uh, maybe could you go back and, and select um, US mainland and then you can just enter in Oahu. Sorry about that folks. I tinkered with it. I should have not touched it. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, um, let us know. I know that we are um, kind of a, a little early. Um, I, what I'll do is I will just show you really quickly our website here um that we just mentioned and hopefully folks can see it can you see it melody the website yes okay. but if you could zoom in that would be great okay so this is our website folks um here and a lot of the information that we shared with you on this presentation you can find actually on the landing page of the website um it's one of kind of our new feature here is the featured post if you scroll all the way down you'll see all the most kind of current um and what we feel relevant at this moment for families and educators and community members. And then um, a lot of what uh, Melody had mo mentioned in terms of our newsletters, um, you know, these uh, welcome back packets you can find on our HVEC downloadables here. And so it's organized and you can quickly um, click on, on these particular boxes here. And then lastly, if you want to connect with us um, on our website, there at the far right at the top of the um, menu, you can contact us, you can subscribe to our newsletters, access the newsletters, and then view all of the members of our core team. And so, um, you know, contact us if you have any questions, if you're here, here in Hawaii and you have a really great um, resource that you'd like to, for us to post, um, please do reach out to us um, as we would love to get all this information to everybody. Hey, thank you very much um, to the presenters for really giving us a great overview um, about the Hawaiian State and Family Engagement Center and how to navigate the, the, the website in that way. So I would like to make another call for um, all the participants, all the 15 people that are in this room to please, um, if you have any questions, we do have about 10 more minutes mm -hmm. um, that we could, um, that we have to engage in a discussion. And I think it's easy to just um, unmute yourself I know that other people are here that are involved in the project. If you want to contribute about something, that would be nice too. Well, um, I would like I would like to raise a question then. Um, just since we still have that time, and I know everybody, COVID nineteen is 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 a topic that just changed. Um, things how we did about so what is um if you could elaborate on one thing that you took away as a to look at it positive what made you come in, what were you doing as an asset to change operations because of COVID-19 where do you think you got stronger in the end for me I think working with our partners especially with our schools right now um really just 
this moment in time has really in, encouraged folks to really engage with families, right? And so, um, you know, educators, uh, stakeholders, even, even our center are finding innovative ways to engage folks even virtually. Um, I know that um, the, many of our partners um, do those uh, kind of what call the, you know, parent cafe talks um, and is really kind of, I guess, amped up and influenced even families to do that networking, um, you know, so, and the technology, I think Ben had mentioned about the technology that has also kind of pushed us all to be a little bit more technology, you know, uh, literate right now at this moment. So I'm really, um, you know, in not, you know, exploring those, those resources that we have. And so one of the things that um, we've talked about with schools in particular um, and their teams is that, you know, when things transition back into some type of normalcy, right, when we can do more in-person gatherings, you know, what are some of the practices that have been working right now that they're going to maintain and continue to do? Because they've been really, really helpful. Some families have mentioned how um, conferences have been easy to navigate virtually when you have multiple children and not having to go from, you know, one school to another school, you know, and, and here in Hawaii for us, sometimes, you know, just to, uh, going across town takes a while, <laughs> you know, so it's, um, and not all, you know, students or families have students going to the same you know, place for whatever reason. So it's, you know, what are some of the practices that have been very helpful for both educators and families and really to build that communication. And so we've been at, we've been asking schools and also reflecting ourselves, what are we going to continue to, to do? Um, because it's been helpful for everyone. Um, so I think it's been a very reflective moment for everyone in terms of how we communicate and how we engage and also valuing that in-person um, type of uh, uh, relationships as well having to do it virtually um, because building trust with families is one, one of the essential conditions in effective partnership, you know, along with the communication, right, of that. And so um, thinking about how we were able to do that before and probably taking, grant, you know, taking it for granted um, and now valuing that a little bit more together, you know. Thank you for addressing that. And um, Carol chimed in with that as well in the chat mm -hmm. that the virtual conferences that they had been successfully increasing parent participation mm -hmm. and that schools will continue doing that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's a yeah, re really great, great point. I even too like the virtual conferences because I'm able to, you know, I mean, attend and do many things, you know, throughout that conference. Um, although I do miss it in person, you know, of course, I miss it, but, you know, I, I found myself a lot more energy being able to uh, attend a conference virtually. And I think um, it's the same for the parents as well. This is Andrea. Um, I am the uh, family school and community liaison for HVAC. And um, I think what I would contribute to um, the response to your question is that I'm very proud of the work that our team was able to do in pivoting uh, early in the spring. And I'm very proud of the resources that we developed, um, in particular, the welcome back packages uh, for the educators and the families. Um, that was developed and came out as an idea as we were listening in the spring to many of the challenges that the educators and the families were having suddenly because no one was able to be together or reach out and kind of connect in person, um, there were a lot of uncertainties um, in terms of whether school would even resume in the fall. And we had to think about, well, what if it doesn't? Um, what, are, what is going to happen? And those resources were very specifically developed um, as kind of a quick study <laughs> guide for both the, the families and the educators so that we could bridge the communication because in almost every meeting that we were in, uh, we were finding that communication was a very heavy and intense challenge. And so we wanted to be able, when the school year resumed, no matter what was going on, what can we do to be able to ensure that the families and the schools can connect, can begin the process of building uh, trust and uh, relationships for the sake of being able to support the students because 
everyone was navigating a very unfamiliar landscape that was creating a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, and a lot of unknowns. And we wanted to be able to have some type of tool in place that could be used as a guide. Uh, because even within the DOE, no one really knew what was going to be the situation, quite frankly, from one week to the next week, things were shifting. But if the families and the schools had at least a way forward, some tools and strategies and techniques, uh, what we wanted to do was be, be able to produce tools that supported some level of continuity and support of learning. And so that's what I would contribute as a response to that. And I'm very grateful uh, for our team in their support of the idea uh, that was brought forward and collaborating together to be able to come up with a resource that has been um, in receipt of a very favorable response, both locally and nationally, uh, where we have shared it. So thank you very much for that question. Okay, it's 1516. I would um, like to thank, and I think we could do like a round of applause to the presenters. Thank you for sharing um, this wonderful research. And I'm gonna go through a couple of formal things. So just we have on Pack Room Conference, thank you so much for attending this session um, with Melody and Angela. And um, I think we really got that resource and that acknowledgement and that importance of having family engagement. Um, so we're happy to have that. 